When it comes to an NHL trade, the majority of the time, it's a toss up. Now, a general manager should have a good idea on who they're trading for, and they should definitely know who they're giving up. But no matter how much scouting you do on a player, no matter how much data you have on that player, until they are inserted into your lineup, you have no clue on how well they will perform in your team's uniform. But every once in a while, we see a GM absolutely swindle another team. We're talking about 500 IQ trades. A trade that was so strategic, where a couple years down the road, the losing side of that trade looks like they were a victim of a robbery. In today's video, we're gonna go over 500 IQ trades. So has your team ever made that insanely strategic trade that left the other team feeling like they've been robbed? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. We are getting so close to 30,000 subscribers, which is just insane. So of course, thank you guys for the awesome support. Let's get straight into this video. We will start with the mastermind himself, Joe Sackick. After being named the general manager of the Colorado Avalanche in 2014, Sackick would have an extremely bumpy first couple of years as not only did the Avs fail to make the playoffs during his first three seasons, but in 2017, the Colorado Avalanche would have one of the worst season totals in decades, as they had finished the season with a horrendous 22 wins and 56 losses. And this regular season was so bad, but somehow it was actually surpassed this season by the Detroit Red Wings. But considering that Colorado had the likes of Nathan McKinnon, Matt Duchesne, Landis Gog, a young Miko Rantanen, their 22 wins was embarrassingly horrendous. And this type of losing and frustration would pay its toll, as it created issues in the locker room strongly involving Matt Duchesne. As he wasn't happy, he didn't want to lose, and so he wanted to be traded to a winning team. And considering that Matt Duchesne was a major piece, if not the biggest offensive driver on the team, Duchesne's trade requests were a massive talking piece that headlined trade rumors for what seemed like an eternity. And that's the key. Instead of forcing a Duchesne trade, Joe Sackick would play chess while other teams were playing checkers. Because it was very apparent that Duchesne would be gone. In fact, I was personally shocked when he wasn't moved at the 2016 deadline in the draft. And I was even more surprised when he was still in an Avalanche jersey at the start of the next season. But Joe Sackick was patient, as he would create a lot of demand waiting for the right trade. And considering that Duchesne's value was down after he underproduced, Sackick would pull the trigger at the exact right moment. As he allowed Duchesne to produce at the start of the 2017-2018 season, boosting his trade value, which resulted in Sackick somehow swindling one of the biggest trade robberies of the past two decades. As all he gave up was Duchesne and a three-way trade, and in return, he'd receive a plethora of assets, including roster players, high-end prospects, and a first-round pick that turned out to be the fourth overall pick, which he'd use to draft Bowen Byram. So this alone was a tremendous return. And the cherry on top was the fact that removing Duchesne from the lineup would change the team's dynamic in such a positive way that Colorado would go from an underperformer to one of the deadliest teams in the entire NHL. Next, we have Steve Eisman and his absurd last second exchange of draft picks. When it comes to draft day, the exchange of draft picks is very common. In fact, it happens in every draft, as teams are commonly trading up in the first round to draft their guy, and the same could be said about every single other round. But what we don't see is a team trading up a single pick in the third round. In fact, it has basically never happened in NHL history. Because when it comes to outside the first round, and especially outside the second round, teams have a completely different perspective on player rankings. Because one team could have a player ranked number one on their list, and another team could have that same player ranked 76 on theirs. And so this gap in the rankings normally doesn't exist in the first round as teams generally have a good sense on talent, so we wouldn't see that extreme of a ranking difference. But on June 27th, 2014, we would see Steve Eiserman make an absolutely absurd trade. 
as he would make a last second trade up from pick number 80 to pick 79, only giving up an extra 7th round pick. And like I mentioned before, this type of transaction doesn't typically exist. Because even if he didn't trade up, there'd still be a 99% chance that his player is still there at 80. However, Steve Eisman didn't want to take the risk, and he would draft who else but Braden Point, who today has emerged as arguably a top 10 talent in the entire NHL. Not to mention he's one of the best talents in this entire draft class. And to think that Steve Eisman trades up a single selection in the third round? Well, that is a gutsy move that has paid off in a monumental way. Because Braden Point to me is the most valuable player on the Lightning. A Lightning team that is one momentum shift away from being a dynasty. Next, we have George McPhee and his expansion draft fiasco. Because during the Golden Knights expansion draft, McPhee would swindle 7 teams into giving him 11 draft picks in order to further protect their players. Now, not to mention that McPhee would also completely rob the Adam Ducks in the Minnesota Wild Blind by acquiring Alex Tuck, who has been an absolute stud in Vegas, and Shea Theodore, who looks like the reincarnation of Scott Niedermeyer. But McPhee would also acquire very valuable first round picks. And one in particular really sticks out, as the Vegas Golden Knights would acquire Jake Bischoff, a cap dump in Mikhail Grabowski, a 2017 first and a 2019 second. And in return, all Vegas would have to do is draft John Francois for Ruby in the expansion draft. And this initial trade isn't necessarily what makes McPhee a genius, but it is the asset management that would soon unravel. As Vegas would go on to draft Eric Brandstrom, who's an extremely high risk, high reward player. As he has the upside of Eric Carlson, but he is undersized and he hasn't proved his puck moving ability yet at the NHL level. But what makes Vegas and George McPhee geniuses is that they would go on to flip Eric Brandstrom for Mark freaking Stone, who is arguably one of the best wingers, one of the best defensive players, a leader, and a point per game scorer. There's literally nothing more you can ask for in a franchise winger. And so when we look back at the chain of events, George McPhee would basically acquire Mark Stone for having to select Berube in the expansion draft. Because they would receive a first round pick in that transaction that would ultimately land Mark Stone. Who, mark my words, will lead Vegas to their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. But anyways guys, has your team ever made that 500 IQ trade that basically robbed another team blind? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And a quick little channel update, thank you guys for all the awesome support on my last video on the 2017 NHL Draft. I was a bit afraid that you guys maybe wouldn't like that type of video, but it got really, really great reception, and I appreciate the feedback, it means a lot to me. I'd say for the past year, I've been making more of these list type videos like this one, and almost like 100 more this year, and I kind of want to shift up the content to still include these types of videos, but also include the more documentary segments like last video. And with that, I actually might test shortening the length of my videos just so it's a bit more easier to be consistent while I'm working another job in school. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. But once again, I appreciate the support so, so much. We are so close to hitting 30,000 subscribers, which is just insane. Again, guys, I know I like, I've repeated this so many times, but it just still blows my mind. And I want to know, I want you guys to know I appreciate it so much. My goal was 5,000 subscribers. And we're almost at 30,000 subscribers for this entire year, which is just insane. But anyways, guys, I hope all you guys are doing well. See you later.